I have my hat for this video. Let's begin. Just, I'm going to unplug some things here. And then we're going to start unscrewing this guy. Now this guy right here, this is a, it's basically a step up ring. It's female and male threaded. And when you screw these things on, make sure the two grooves that are on them face out. Because if you don't have them facing out and you get this thing on here too tight, you are never gonna get it off short of taking a plumber's wrench to it and like ruining it. And yeah, we have our directions here. Pretty nice scope faces that way, camera faces this way. Very self-explanatory. And like that. So now, as far as like tension goes, that, that's about all the, the, the turning tension you wanna do. You don't wanna yank down on these things really hard, you know, cause then you could destroy threads. We're, we're working, the threads on these things are very, very fine. So really, not a lot of tension is needed. The equipment that I'm going to be using, this is, if, if we need to break this out, out, we will, we probably will when we do the rotation test to see if there's backlash in the rotation. But for the most part, I'm gonna be using test indicators. These are, these are brown and sharp indicators, which are quite expensive. You can't even get them anymore. Uh, this one here in particular measures half of a thousandth or five ten thousandths. And then this one, yeah, this one also measures down to, yeah, half a thousandth. And, and, and you can actually look at the dials on these and kind of say that's, that's a couple tenths this way, a couple tenths that way. But, all right, we're gonna put some weights on the scope itself just to make sure that it doesn't move. I've already got it sitting on my granite block here. This, this granite block, about four inches thick, weighs about 800 pounds and takes four people to lift. <laughs> <laughs> and move and basically we're going to use this as our foundation to do all of our tests on it see this this is a piece of 3 8 inch stainless steel and i'm holding it from the middle right now now this thing is actually bowing because i'm holding it by in the middle you can't see that with your eyes but gauges like these can actually detect this and measure it we're going to test the whole thing together with the actual rotator in place to see if there's any play in the rotator. Now, I am actually setting the indicator on the camera body itself. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it different directions with a specific amount of poundage. We're gonna use two pounds. We're gonna go up, we're gonna go down, back and forth and see how much flexure there is with this entire system in place. And we'll probably at the end here, we'll go and actually remove the camera rotator and we'll do the same set of tests again though this time without the rotator in place to see if it reduces the amount of flexure. This dial indicator, this is a very sensitive dial indicator. It's a half thousand indicator. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up two pounds, all right? You can see that was about 15 thousandths total. And as you can see, it stopped about two thousandths higher. And I actually saw it drift back a little bit, probably about two or three tenths, kind of slowly there as, as everything kind of settled out and dropped back into place. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place, this is like, this is about two pounds. It's about the same amount of weight. And we're going to see basically how much it drops. Now you'll notice that it's not by as much and that's because the weight of the system, it's already hanging down this direction. So everything's pretty much already engaged. We're just adding two more pounds. As you can see, there's about, what is it? That's, a, that's about what, four, th four thousandths? And there, look at that. It jumped back to the exact same spot where it was before, because we've kind of settled things back out to where, where they were before. All right, now on this particular test, we are going to go to the right. We're going to go two pounds. 
And so you can see there just how much it went around. It went around about, what, 16,000s it looks like. And I'm sure you can pause it and zoom in and everything. But as you can see, there's a little bit of memory as well. And this one, this one looks to be about, uh, what is that? That's about 2,000s right there of where it, it didn't kind of spring back. We could probably like push it the other way and see right there, it's just about stopping right where it was in the beginning. Here we are now, this is without the rotator in the system. And we are going to go ahead and take two pounds of lift and go up with it essentially. I can get this thing in here. All right, let's go. Two pounds, here we go. There's two pounds. And you can see there's about 5,000 of the rotation there on that dial. I think before there was, what, what was it, 15? Now we're gonna go the opposite direction. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add about two pounds to the entire rig. And you can see right there, it, it's actually dropping down to about the exact same spot where it was before. So it may very well be that the rotator um, doesn't have a lot of additional play in it when, once it's fully engaged, so to speak. All right, once again, we've got the dial set to zero. And <laughs> we're just gonna pull this way, two pounds. As you can see, there's a little bit of late memory that comes back into it. Uh, I was on the other side though, so I couldn't read the dial. So I'm not gonna make any comments on that. Here's the last test. This is without the rotator in there. And we're going to see just how much, how much movement we get in it. And you guys can compare the numbers. Two pounds. Right there. Looks like that was about, what, 10, 11 thousandths of movement. And we actually had quite a bit of movement back. But yeah, that's, that's about, what, four and a half thousandths of latency, I guess we would call it. ZWO, the day that this thing showed up, this new tab showed up, which is basically the camera rotator, and calibration data rotates with the CAA. That means the, the, the guide camera is gonna rotate with it, so it will compensate for that for you automatically. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and type in our first, well, let's do one degree, okay? Ah, it's rotating the camera itself, not the, I thought the, the actual, okay, I've got the dial indicator in the wrong spot. <laughs> Alright, so this was kind of like the best spot that I could think of to put this thing. And I, I tested that little knob, it's, it's pretty solid. Alright, so we're going to try one degree. Let's hit the rotate. And there you can see how much it went. Okay, now let's go ahead and rotate the opposite direction, right? Zero degrees. And we're gonna go back to its spot. So there you go. You can see the dial moved. All right, we'll move it once again to one degree. And there, from that you'll be able to basically see how much backlash there is in the system. Okay, let's go ahead and do, let's, let's go back to zero once more, all right? And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go half a degree, okay? Hit rotate, and then we'll hit another half degree, and there's the other half degree. And then we'll go back, half a degree. And you can see there, there's, there's about, what, five thousandths of backlash is kind of what, what I was looking at there. I'll have to review the video because I'm, I'm not terribly closely paying attention to what the dials are doing. But 
But there you go. Ah, that, that was really fun. I, I don't know about you guys, but I got a buzz from that. <laughs> there we go. I thought you, I hope you, hopefully you found that interesting and everything, and it kind of gives you an idea as to the precision with which this thing moves. And I, so far, I think I'm pretty impressed. Like this is the first time I've ever used a camera rotator, but uh, even the focuser of the scope is actually really impressing me because this is the first time I've tested the focuser on this SV Boney scope. I've been meaning to do a test on it, I just haven't. But yeah, overall, all the numbers to me, they check out, they look good. This is definitely not a dud product and it seems like it's very, very well made.